I was literally just aiming for 75% of the scores, but there was no shortage of people who were absolutely try-harding in this course and adding as many bonus features as they could so they could max out their grade. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 291. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 291 during the 2023 2024 school year, during the winter term and all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 291 all about? In this course, through a mixture of labs and projects, you will be using all of the core electrical engineering knowledge that you've accumulated thus far to gain some hands-on experience actually designing stuff using your knowledge of electronic devices and circuits, programming in assembly and C code, signals and systems, microcomputers, and electromagnetism, you will be tasked with building and designing devices such as alarm clocks, capacitance meters, temperature sensors, and even a remote controlled metal detector robot. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 291 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have a two hour lecture and two three hour lab sessions for ELEC 291. During the lecture, the professor will explain the next lab or project that will be completed, describing what you'll need and what you're going to do. During the lab sessions, you will work on your labs or projects and get them marked by TAs during your lab sessions. When it's time to get your labs or projects marked, you will write your name and lab bench on a whiteboard and the TAs will go through the queue when they are marking. I will say that although you do have two three hour lab sessions each week, it's highly likely that you'll be spending a lot of time outside of class to work on your labs and your projects. Especially for the projects and the more difficult labs, I remembered going to the lab to work on them whenever we had a gap in our day or even during the weekends. And some people stayed overnight to work on their labs. ELEC 291 consists of six lab assignments and two group projects that you'll need to complete, which we'll discuss in more detail in just a bit. For each of your projects, in addition to designing, building, and demonstrating your project, you will also need to create a short video presentation about how your project works and write up a project report. The video presentation should be no more than five minutes long and you should at least describe what your project is supposed to do and any additional features that you added. If you want reference to what our video presentations look like, I'll leave a link in the description below to the videos that I made for our projects. The project reports on the other hand have a specific format that will be outlined for you in the project outline document and you are required to follow this format. In terms of required materials for this course, you're going to need a few things to help you get set up in this course. First is your second year ELEC tools and parts kit, which you should have already purchased at the beginning of the year. In addition to this, there are three kits that you'll need to purchase for your labs and your group projects. The first kit is called the microcontroller kit and includes the microcontroller and a few other components in it that will allow you to complete the labs. The microcontroller kit will be purchased right at the beginning of the course and costs $32. The second kit that you'll need to buy has all the materials that you'll need for your first group project, which you will purchase right after you finish lab three and form your groups for project one. This second kit costs $120, and this cost will be split evenly amongst your group members. And the last kit you'll need to purchase will be for the second group project, and its $80 cost will also be split evenly amongst your group members. Assuming that you have six people for both of your projects, these three kits should cost you around $65.33 in total. It's also kind of a no-brainer that you'll need a good laptop for this course. In terms of Mac or Windows, it's generally recommended to have a Windows PC, but it's not impossible to get through this course using a Mac. One of my group members was able to do everything on his MacBook, but he did have to do some workarounds in order to get things to work properly. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 291. Because this is a design studio course and you're mostly using what you've learned in other courses to complete the assignments for this course, I'll instead be going through the labs and the projects that we had to complete in our year in chronological order. As mentioned before, you will have six weekly lab assignments to complete for ELEC 291. 
The first three labs are completed individually, while the last three labs can be completed individually or with a partner. In terms of the projects, you will have two group projects that will be given with around two to three weeks of working time. For the projects, you will be working on them in up to groups of six people. Lab 1 was our first introduction to the course, and our objective was to build a microcontroller system, attach an LCD to the microcontroller system, and display our name and student number on the LCD. This lab will require you to do a little bit of soldering for the pins of the microcontroller system and the LCD, and a little bit of code to get your name and your student number onto the LCD. I'm going to be straight up with you, this lab literally handholds you the whole way through. So be prepared to jump into the deep end in the next lab. In lab 2, you will be tasked with writing an assembly program for the microcontroller system and LCD that you built for lab 1 for an alarm clock. The alarm clock must display the hours in 12 hour time, the minutes and the seconds on the LCD, and the current time must be settable using push buttons. And don't forget that this is an alarm clock, meaning that you'll need to program a settable alarm and use a speaker in your microcontroller kit to produce an alarm sound. This lab is a huge step up in difficulty compared to lab 1, so make sure you're prepared for that and pay attention during class. In lab 3, you will be tasked with building an embedded digital thermometer using the microcontroller system that will transmit the temperature reading to your computer using the serial port. Using MATLAB or Python, you will program your computer to receive this temperature and present it onto a strip chart plot. You will use the soldering irons at your lab stations to carefully heat up the temperature sensor, but just make sure that you don't melt it. Most people choose to do this lab using Python, but the choice between MATLAB or Python is completely up to you. For Project 1, you and up to 5 other group members will be designing and building a reflow oven controller, which uses a circuit, a thermocouple wire, assembly code, and a solid state relay box to control the power fed to an oven to reflect a reflow soldering profile. I'm going to try to explain how this works in the simplest terms possible. Okay, so the thermocouple wire is inside the oven and senses a temperature inside the oven, sends that temperature to the microcontroller and depending on what temperature is in the oven, the microcontroller will move through a finite state machine, which you'll learn in CPEN 211, where the power fed to the oven will change depending on which state it is in. Once you've done your project demonstration to the TAs, you will then work on your project report and the video presentation for this project. And speaking of, if you'd like a little more information about this project, I'll link my video presentation for project one in the description below. In lab four, you will be tasked with building a capacitance meter to measure capacitors within the range of one nanofarad to one microfarad. Using your reflow oven controller from project one, you will first need to solder the SMT components onto the EFM8 microcontroller board, as this board will be used for labs four to six. You'll then need to use or build a 555 timer that acts as an oscillator, whose frequency output will be inversely proportional to the capacitance of the capacitor that is used in the circuit. And instead of assembly code, you will be coding this lab and every lab after this using C code. And just as a reminder, you can work on this lab and every lab after this, either by yourself or with a partner. In lab five, you will be tasked with designing and testing an AC phaser voltmeter. Using the function generators in the labs and outputting two signals with the same frequency but varying amplitudes and phase shifts, you'll need to display the magnitude of both input signals in RMS volts and the phase difference between the reference and the test signal. There are multiple different approaches that you can take with this lab, either using more hardware or more software for your design. It's completely up to you, but I do know someone who was able to get this to work with just a couple of resistors and I think like four diodes, so up to you. In lab six, you will be doing exactly what you did in lab four, but instead you'll be using a different microcontroller system. There are five different microprocessors that can be used, and they are included as part of your project two kit. So make sure you form your project two groups before you start lab six. It's completely up to you which one you choose as it'll come down to how much documentation you'd like to read through, how powerful each microprocessor is, the amount of example code that is available for you to reference, and whether you're using a MacBook or not. For my partner and I, we chose the PIC32 microcontroller system for our lab six. And lastly, in project two, you'll be working with your group members to design, build, program, and test a remote controlled metal detector robot. 
The robot will be battery operated and controlled using a microcontroller system. The remote will send commands to the robot and the robot will send information back to the remote to be displayed on an LCD. The robot will also be able to detect any kind of metal using an inductor at the front of the robot. Radio modules will be used to communicate between the robot and the remote, and the entire project will be coded using the C programming language. There are a bunch of other criteria with this project, but the last big one is that your robot should be able to move smoothly in any direction and follow a specific pattern as well, with the speed and direction being adjustable using the joystick on the remote. And as with project one, once you've done your demonstration for this project, you will need to complete the project report and create your video presentation. If you want to see what our robot looked like, I'll have a link in the description below to our video presentation for Project 2. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to do in ELEC 291. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 291, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. It's actually relatively simple. Each of your six labs are worth 5% each, your Project 1 demonstration is worth 20%, your project 2 demonstration is worth 30%, the video presentations for both projects are worth 5% each, and the reports for both projects are also worth 5% each. In ELEC 291, the labs and project demonstrations are evaluated based on a slightly odd criteria. Basically, if you do only everything that is required for a lab or a project, you will be capped at a grade of 75%. The only way to get above 75% is to either make your circuit well designed, basically clean it up, or to add any additional features or functionality to your design. From what I saw from the other groups in my class, if you are going to add bonus features, make sure that they're still somewhat relevant to the original goal of the lab or the project. For example, I remember there was a group that coded a small game onto their remote control for the robot for Project 2, but they didn't receive any bonus marks for it because it was pretty irrelevant to the overall functionality of the robot itself. So I guess the takeaway message is to be creative, but make sure your creativity stays within the realm of electrical engineering. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 291. Pretty much all that I have to say about this course can be boiled down into three tips. Start your labs and projects as early as possible, make sure you're able to work well with your partner and your group mates, and the TAs are not very helpful in this course. This course is going to take up a lot of your time during term two of second year, especially with the projects, expect to spend a lot of time outside of class working on things for ELEC 291. The best way to put yourself in a good position for this course is to start your labs and your projects as early as possible, so you won't have to pull an all-nighter just to get one of your labs done. Another thing that will put you in good condition for ELEC 291 is to make sure you're able to work well with your groupmates for the projects and your partner if you choose to have one for labs four to six. There were many instances of miscommunication or imbalances of work between group members within different groups in my section of ELEC 291, which meant that some groups weren't performing as well as they could have been. When choosing your groups, make sure you know how each of your group members like to work and how you will work cohesively as a group for your project. And regarding the TAs, most of them are only there to mark your labs and your projects and probably won't be able to help you with any problems that you might have. Also, expect some of them to be late, especially if you have the 8 a.m. lab session. If you do need help with a problem, your best bet will be asking the professor, Jesus, himself. He usually shows up for about an hour or two in each lab session, but you're probably going to have to fight to get him to help you with your problem. And for those of you who are curious, I scored an 81% in ELEC 291 and the class average was 83%. I was literally just aiming for 75% in the scores, but there was no shortage of people who were absolutely try-harding in this course and adding as many bonus features as they could so they could max out their grade. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 291. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.